Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and as always I am so glad that you have landed on today's video. Today we are going to be talking about the subject of drowsiness and how in fact drowsiness is dangerous. I want to talk to you today from personal experience, something that happened to me a couple months ago and how I believe as Christians we need to be on our guard that we can at any point in time in our journey with Jesus become dangerously drowsy. And so if this is a video that is of interest to you, I would invite you to let's just get right into the video. One day, several months ago, I was heading back to my hometown two and a half hours away. And as I pulled onto the highway, I could feel it begin. This drowsiness took over and I was exhausted. And when I mean I was exhausted, I was out. I was so tired. I was so physically fatigued. I wasn't sure how on earth I was going to make that journey. I literally could not stop yawning. Every few miles or so, I actually had to pinch myself to stay awake. I had to turn off all of the sun from coming in from my sunroof even because I was overcome with drowsiness. I ended up stopping halfway from here to there to get coffee and even that didn't help. Needless to say, it was a very exhausting morning one that I wouldn't be anxious to do again anytime in the near future. And it wasn't quite the length of the journey that was the problem. It was the sleepy state that I found myself in on this particular day. Truth be told, it was my own fault. I didn't get to bed as early the night before as I should have, which made for serious sleepy conditions for myself that day. But so often we know what we should do and we do the exact opposite. We know we need to do better, but we make poor choices. And can I get an amen? Is there anyone that can vouch for at times we simply don't make the right choice? In Matthew 13, Jesus is teaching a parable that is probably very familiar to most of us. It's the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And in verse 25 of Matthew 13, Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But according to this verse, it says, but that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and then slipped away. It's the danger that abounds for those of us who are followers of Jesus. I'm currently working through a book entitled Heaven Taken by Storm by Thomas Watson. It is an excellent read that I would recommend that you get your hands on if you can. And I'm using it in conjunction with my morning quiet time. Using Matthew 11, 12 as its foundation, and it says this, I'll read it to you. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Now, according to this verse and laying this verse as its foundation, Watson teaches how only the violent for Jesus will inherit the blessing of the kingdom, both now and in in our home in heaven. In chapter 11 of that book, Heaven Taken by Storm, he teaches that it is the violence for Jesus that prevents much sin. This word violent is this Greek word biatsai, and it means a forceful, violent man, one who is in eager pursuit. And it's from the Greek word biazo, which means a forcer or energetic. Now I know for you and I, the word violent or violence can have such a negative connotation to it, but it's not so the case here. It's this necessary word that has an action associated with it that is essential for the people of Jesus. Watson says this in his book, and I'm going to quote, and it's a pretty lengthy quote, but I want you to hear what he says. 
He says that while men are idle in the vineyard, they are prey to every sort of temptation. We do not sow our seeds in fallow. And fallow really just means inactive or neglected. So he says we do not sow our seeds in neglected or inactive ground. But Satan sows most of his seed in the temptation in hearts that lie fallow. So in other words, Satan often comes in to those lives that are idle, that are inactive, that are neglected in their spiritual care, and that's when he sows temptations in those hearts. He goes on to say, when he sees a person unemployed, he will find work for them to do. He will stir them up to one sin or another. Matthew 13, 25 shows that while men slept, the enemy sowed tares or weeds. When Satan finds men in a drowsy condition, Watson says, their sleeping time is his tempting time. But by holy violence, we prevent the devil's design. We are so busy with salvation that we have no leisure to listen to the temptation. Don't you love that? When we are employed with doing the kingdom work, when we are busying our hands with loving people, with serving people, with honoring God with our lives, then we don't have time to pay attention to the work that the enemy is working so hard to do. Watson goes on to say this. He says, when the bird is flying, it's safe. But when it sits still on the bow, it is a danger of being shot. When a Christian sits still and is inactive, then the devil shoots him with his fiery darts. Wow, this is so good and it means so much to me when I read this because I have many times in my life found myself in idle, inactive place and that is the most dangerous place to read. Recently, I read about a commentator who said this, that even when we are sleeping, we are on the battlefield. Even when we are sleeping, it's why I believe with all my heart that we need to go to bed praying that God would cover us, that he would be with us when we slept, that he would cover us as we are sleeping because that is often the case, that the enemy sows these temptations into our minds and into our hearts when we're sleeping. It's why Jesus says, don't go to bed. Don't let the sun go down on your anger because he knows that when you're sleeping, is when the enemy puts all of the temptations in your mind to be even angrier upon waking up. Drowsiness is dangerous. Idleness is fatal. When we have stopped working for Jesus, when we have become lazy in our pursuit of him, when we wake up in the morning and we go, you know what, he doesn't need for us to spend time with him today. I'm gonna opt to do something else. Even if that something else is still good. Meaning even if you wake up and you're like, you know what, I believe that the Lord would have me to exercise today instead of spending time with him. That is being lazy in our pursuit of Jesus. That is not seeking first the kingdom of heaven. And that's what Matthew 6 tells us, that we need to seek the kingdom above all else. Everything else takes a back seat. When we have allowed ourselves to become numb in our daily mercy, when we have forgotten the urgency of the hour, we become a target for the enemy to sow seeds in the garden of our hearts thus causing what I believe is this spiritual decline and even worse altogether, spiritual death, an absolute premature spiritual death when we neglect being with him in the morning, when we neglect making him the first central part of our lives, when we become numb to all of the things that he's doing. You know, years ago, I used to run a Bible study every single Thursday. I used to coordinate, organize, and facilitate this Bible study every single Thursday night. And I remember oftentimes I would come and I would tell all of the women there that I was so glad to see them and that it was an absolute honor and a privilege to be with them. I would often start my night by telling them, do you know that it's a miracle that you're even here today? That we're even able to be in his presence in this place? Will you tell me something good? 
I remember that I would start so many Thursday nights with tell me something good. And I remember so many times that the women would look at one another and they would think, well, you go, I can't think of anything. They couldn't tell me, they couldn't think of anything that they saw God do that week, anything that they saw God provide for them for that week. They couldn't see the goodness of the Lord. And we become so much at danger and so much into Satan's care when we forget, when we neglect to see see God's mercy all around us, when we have forgotten the urgency of the hour, when we look out and we're like, we can do that later, we'll get to that later, we'll call that person later, we'll reach out to that loved one later, we'll read our Bible later, we will pray for that person later. Listen, there is an urgency in the hour. I am always saying this, when the Lord lays someone on your heart, when he lays something on your heart, be obedient to do it in that moment. Reach out to that person, call that person, send the text to that person, reach out to that individual. Do the thing that God is asking you to do now. Listen, tomorrow is not promised. The next hour of our life, it is not guaranteed. And so do we become in danger of this drowsiness simply by doing these things, by neglecting the urgency of the hour? Listen, Satan whispers lies to the inactive soul. He orchestrates temptations into the idle life. He causes deceit and division in the neglected heart. He is crafty. He is cunning, and he wins the battles of lifeless Christians who have fallen asleep at the wheel. Drowsiness is dangerous. It was for me that morning in my two-hour commute back home, and it is for you and I who find ourselves in this sleepy state when we find ourselves unaware of the danger that is lurking about. And listen, I don't mean sitting in fear and looking at all of the danger that surrounds you and being fearful. I mean being aware that the enemy is sowing tares, that the enemy will come at you at your weakest point. He will attack. And listen, it's not always when we're sitting this one out. It's not always when we're down and out. Sometimes it is when we are in the highest degree of success that the enemy will come in, that the enemy will sow tares, that the enemy will form these weeds among the wheat that is growing in our life because his aim and his target is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The enemy is always working overtime. He doesn't rest. Look at 1 Peter 5, 8. It says here, Peter warns us, be alert and be sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That alone, listen, that alone, dear friend, ought to concern us into constant alertness and habitual action. And so what do we do? What is the habitual action? What is the constant concern that you and I need to be targeting in our life? What are some of the practical ways that we can make sure that we stay alert and stay awake to what he's doing around us? The first thing is getting into the word daily. Listen, I cannot stress this to you enough. I lived a majority of my very first years being a Christian in those early years. I mean, 30 some years I went believing that that wasn't necessary for me, that that wasn't a necessary part of serving Jesus. But can I tell you how wrong I was? I am sitting here today as someone who knows what it's like to live outside of the Word of God. And now, being that I've been in His Word for the last 12 years, I cannot tell you what value has been added to my life. And the same 
can be true for you. Get into the Word every day. I talked to a friend yesterday and she said, half the time I'm in the Word, I have no idea what I'm reading. I do not understand what is being talked about or what is being taught. And I told her, keep reading, don't stop. Ask Him to give you a passion for His Word. Ask Him to illuminate His Word for you, to bring an awareness of what is being talked about, to bring wisdom as you study His Word. Listen, that is a prayer that he longs to answer for the heart that is desperate for him. And so I would say that is the first and foremost thing. Get into his word every day. The second thing is fighting battles on our knees. Listen, fighting these battles on our knees in prayer every single day, it is so important. Listen, I have to ask myself all the time, am I complaining about this as much as I am praying about this? Am I calling friends and complaining with friends more than I am getting on my knees before the Jesus of the universe, before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, knowing that he has a great solution in mind for him, knowing that he has victory prepared for me? Am I on my knees every day and talking with him and sharing my heart with him and praying for my needs and the needs of people that I love and care about? The next thing that I would say is communing with the Father. Listen, this is more than just praying. I think that we think oftentimes that we're praying on our knees as this being this act, right, where we are getting alone with Jesus, when we are in our quiet time, we are in our sanctuary, when we are at peace away from the world, getting on our knees. We think about this as a physical act of something that we do, but did you also know that you have the luxury, you and I have the privilege of being in communion with God all day long. And so oftentimes what I will find is that I never really have a set prayer time, but that really my whole entire day is prayer. I'm talking to God in the shower. I talk to him as I am driving in my car. I'm talking to him as I'm going to bed at night. I'm talking to him sometimes as I'm standing there in, in the line at the grocery store and praying for those people around me. It's this constant communion with the Father. That is about relationship. That is what relationship is. Listen, I could have a relationship with my husband and never say two words to him the entire day, but what kind of relationship would that be? No, in fact, I am constantly sharing things with my husband. I'm constantly having conversations with him. I'm constantly talking to him about my day, telling him what is pressing and what is weighing on my heart and those kinds of things. So it is important that we not only pray on our knees about the situations that are burning our hearts, but that we also commune with the Father, that we have ongoing dialect with the Father. The next thing that I would say is to implore the help of the Holy Spirit. Listen, have you ever considered that? Imploring the help of the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Holy Spirit, be my guide. Holy Spirit, go before me. Holy Spirit, be in this moment. Help me to want to know your word. Help me to want to love your word. Help me to be in communion with the Father more. Holy Spirit, help me. Listen, he is our advocate. He is our helper. And we are the student. And can we come to him every single day and say, I have no idea what I'm doing. Apart from God, I can do nothing. So will you help me, Holy Spirit? Will you dwell within my life? And will you take up residence in my life to be my advocate, to speak on my behalf, and to teach me what I need? to know. Listen, these are just four simple things. There are so many more that I could mention, like getting into fellowship with other believers, communing with other people who think the way that you think, who are Christians, who are solid Christians, who are living godly lives, who are living on a firm foundation of Jesus, getting a mentor, getting into a small group, signing up for a Bible study online, even if it's one that we've offered on Zoom, it's better than nothing. It's getting into community with other people, being part of a body of believers, being a part of the local church. These are things that we can do in our daily life. These are practical 
practical ways that we can stay awake to what he's doing. Listen, we constantly need reminding. I was talking to a really good friend this morning and it was so good to hear her voice because sometimes we just need to be in communion with other people who believe the way that we believe, who think the way that we think, who are on the same path with Jesus that we are on. Maintaining a passion for him, a passion for his word, will take violence. Listen, as Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, it will take violence. It will require that you and I are violent for Jesus, that we make it a priority every single day of our life to read his word, to be with him, and to be with the family, the body of believers that strengthens the whole entire body. We must take it by force. We must take it by force. We must be violent because it goes in complete opposition to our human tendency. And what is our human tendency? It's to avoid discomfort. And it's oftentimes to embrace laziness. Listen, I would end with these three important things. Stay alert, keep awake, and be aware of the danger that abounds. It doesn't mean being focused on the danger that abounds. I think that that is a whole nother conversation for a whole different day. That so oftentimes we become so fixated on all the problems that are going on in our world. It is not about being fixated on our problems. It's being aware, consciously aware of the danger that we can find ourselves in at any point in our journey. Stay alert, keep awake, and be aware of our surroundings. Be aware of the danger that abounds. Listen, friends, this is so important to get into us. It is so important. It was for me that day. It was such a connection that I made that day when I was so drowsy and I thought, isn't this how we often are in our Christian walk? Lazy, idle, tired. And can I say that most of the time it's our own fault. It's not the fault of our church. It's not the fault of our mentor. It's not the fault of our friends or our spouses. It's our fault oftentimes for not staying aware of our surroundings, keeping awake, staying alert every single day of our lives. Listen, this is the call for all believers in Jesus. I hope that you have liked this video today. If you have, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. Make sure to share this video with someone that you know and love who needs to be made aware of these truths. Thank you again for spending a little bit of time with me today. I am so appreciative of you and I value your time. I'm already looking so forward to my next video, so do not forget to hit that notification bell just down below to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this one. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.